Hey guys, it's Sarthak from FTC Team 9794Wizards.exe. Welcome to the fifth part of our Odometry Spellbook video series, and this will also be the final part of the video series. But here we're going to get to learning how we can implement some of the software parts we learned in the last video to make our robot move to specific coordinates on the field. This means that I can move to any specified position I want using the algorithm and uh, software components that we set up in the previous tutorial series, uh, previous part, sorry. Um, just one thing to note before we begin is um, there was a, a small bug in the code that I released in the last video, and I was able to quickly fix that. So if you downloaded the code um, before two weeks ago, which is when I fixed it, so if you downloaded the code before two weeks ago, make sure you have the latest version of that. Um, it can be found in the video link in the description for the previous part. Just make sure you have that updated version so you're all good to go. Um, with that said, we're ready to go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to open up Android Studio. And I have, I've already created an op mode called My Odometry Op Mode. Um, you'll be able to download this in the video description. Um, there should be a link over there for you guys. But it's just a basic op mode that um, has some methods that we're going to use to um, start building the blocks we need in order to get our ro robot to move to, the, to a specific position on the field. Um, now, one thing to note is when you download this file, you'll likely get an error in one of the import statements um, just because of how my code is organized. Um, you have to make sure that you have the right uh, import statement pointing to the right package for your odometry global coordinate position class, which is the class that contains the algorithm for the localization of the robot. So quickly, just to go over some things, um, we have our drive motors over here, our odometry encoder wheels over here. Um, over here we have a variable called counts per inch, and this is a constant that converts in the encoder counts measured by the odometry encoder wheels to um, inches. So if your odometry encoder uh, wheel reads 307 counts and some change, that means that it's rotated about one inch. So that's how we make that conversion, and we'll be using this on later in the video when we specify how we go to different coordinate positions. Over here we have the hard hardware map information and for both the drive motors and the odometry encoders. Make sure you update those for your robot, otherwise your app will crash right in the beginning. And then finally we have our global position update object, which is running the thread that runs the robot localization algorithm which was explained in the previous video. Now, um, all we do is we initialize the hardware map, and after the program starts, we start up the threads and reverse the encoders. Um, I believe this should be right for the strafer kit, you reverse the right and the normal encoder, but uh, you have to make sure that works for your robot. If you don't know how to check, make sure you review the previous video, which explains how to go through that process. All right, um, before we get going, I would recommend you just download this op mode onto your robot controller phone, run it, and make sure that the X, Y, and orientation positions are updating correctly just to make sure that everything is in working order. Uh, once you do that, uh, we can go ahead and get started. So we want to write a method that sends the robot to a specific coordinate position. So I'm just going to create a new method over here. I'm going to call it public void go to position. And when we go to a position, what are the parameters that we need to specify? Well, first of all, we have to specify where we want to go, obviously. So we want to say we want to have a target X position, as well as a target Y position. Um, now we need to add some other parameters to specify how the robot is going to move. So we want to add a parameter for the robot power, so how fast is it going to move. and the next thing we want to add is we want to uh, add a parameter called desired robot orientation, which I'll explain. So when a McCam drive is moving at different angles, it has a tendency to drift. So if I was moving at 90 degrees, so I'm strafing to the right, um, the robot has a tendency to rotate a little bit while it's doing that. And we want to be able to keep the robot in the orientation that we want. So in that case, we want to keep it facing forward. So we want the robot to know that it has to keep facing forward that entire time, and we can implement any corrections that we need to, which I'll explain when we get to that in the method. But those should be the four parameters that we need. 
and now we can go ahead and get started. So if we think about um, going to a point, let's say that we're at x equals 2 inches and y equals 2 inches, and we want to go to x equals 10 inches and y equals 10 inches. Well, if we connect those two points together, if we connect those two points together like that, we can notice that it forms a right triangle. So one leg of the triangle is the difference in the y value, and one leg of the triangle is in the difference of x value. So we have to find those two legs to begin with. So if we take that example case, where we're going from 2 comma 2 to 10 comma 10, the legs of the triangle will both be 8, 10 minus 2 for the x and 10 minus 2 for the y. So we have to get that difference. So we're going to say double um, distance to x target equals the desired x position, so the target x position, minus the current position of the robot in the x-axis. So we want to say global position update that return x coordinate. Then we're going to do the same thing for the y value. So we want distance to y target equals the target y position minus the um, uh, robot's y coordinate. So we have the two legs of the triangle that we need. Now, um, what we have to do is we have to be able to calculate the um, we have to be able to calculate the angle that the robot wants to move at. So, say we're going from 0, 0 to 24, 24. Well, I know that's a diagonal line just in my head, but what angle is that? Since we have a right triangle um, with those two legs that we just talked about, we can use the arc tangent function um, to figure out what angle we have to move at since we know those two legs of the triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called double robot movement angle. And we're going to set that equal to um, math.atan2. Now, it's important to use atan2, arctangent2, because it returns the correct angle in any quadrant of a Cartesian coordinate system. So if you just use the regular atan function, arctangent has a restricted domain, um, meaning that it's only going to um, give you values in, I believe, the first and the fourth quadrant. So the first and the fourth quadrant. But our robot could also be needing to move in the second or third quadrants. Well, ATAN2 um, takes in that, that into account and returns the correct coordinate. Now, we have to put in our two variables here. Um, normally, you would do y over x. But since I want uh, 0 degrees to be pointing forwards, straight forwards, not um, sideways like it would in a unit circle, I want x to go first. So I want to say distance to x target, comma, distance to y target. Um, now, one thing to note is that this is going to return an angle in radians. So I just want to convert that to degrees. So I'm just going to say map.2 degrees and put parentheses around the ATAN2 function. So that's how we get our robot movement angle. Now, um, to get your robot to move in a specific angle, we have to consider the different components of the motion. So we want to get the x component of the motion the y, and the y component of the motion. Since, um, each, since moving at any angle has both an, a horizontal and a vertical component. So to get those components, I've included two methods at the bottom of this class. The first one calculates the x, which is just the sine of the angle, um, times, uh, times the power of the robot that we want to go at. The y component is the same thing, except it uses cosine. Now, you might be wondering why we're using sine when we're calculating the horizontal and cosine when we're calculating the vertical. Well, this is for the same reason that I want 0 degrees to be pointing forwards and not to the right like a unit circle. So you have to flip these. Um, technically, it's the same as saying math.cosine of um, pi over 2 radians minus um, what we have in there. But what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to leave it as sine since it's the same trig identity. Alright, so why don't we go ahead and calculate those components. So I'm just going to um, say double um, robot movement x component equals the cal equals calculate x, then we pass in our robot movement angle, and we pass in the desired robot power, so I got robot power. 
want to do the same thing for the Y. So we want robot movement Y component. And we're going to say calculate Y and pass in the two same parameters. All right, so we have those two things in place. Now, a couple things that we have to add to our method before we're all set. So we still haven't used this desired robot orientation, which I explained. So what we have to do is we have to figure out, if necessary, how much we have to correct our robot to maintain that desired orientation. So what corrections do we have to make? Well, this is actually pretty simple. So what we want to do is we want to say double pivot correction. So how much does the robot have to pivot to maintain that orientation that we want to? Then we want to say desired robot orientation minus the current orientation of the robot. So we want global position update dot return orientation. Now you just want to make sure that it's returning this in degrees just so we have our, all of our units set properly. And it looks like that's the case. So we should be good to go. Now we have, we have the three components that we need to do the robot motion. Now the last thing that we have to do is we have to add a condition to this. So when are we moving? So how, 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 when should we stop moving? Or when should we stop calculating all these values? So I'm going to add a while loop in here. So while op mode is active, we'll add some more conditions to it, but just for now, I'm going to put all of this inside that while loop. And we have it over there. So we want to keep moving until we reach our desired position. Um, so what I'm, I'm going to do is we want to keep going until, let's say, we're about one inch away from our position. Just because the robot has to stop and it's going to drift a little bit. So let's say we're going to move one inch. Un we're going to move to our position plus or minus one inch. So there's like a one inch circle around our desired point that we want to go to. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to calculate our distance away from the target. So we want to say double distance. And we can use the map.hypotenuse function. And we just have to pass in, oh whoops. We'll actually need these two variables up here. So I'm just going to cut and paste these up here. So we want to calculate our distance and we just have to pass in our distance to x target and our distance to y target variables. And we'll also have to re keep redoing those calculations. So pay, uh, copy and paste these two variables, variables back in here. But you're just going to delete the double just so we resolve those errors. So we have this distance variable. And now what we want to do is we'll add another parameter in here called double allowable distance error. And that's just basically going to mean how accurate do we want our motion to be. So when should we stop driving our motors? So in this case, I'm just going to add a condition to the while loop that says while op mode is active and the distance to our target position, as we just calculated, is less than the allowable distance error. Oh, sorry, we want to keep this while it's greater than. So we're going to keep going. The robot will keep driving itself until we're within that allowable distance error, which is when this condition will be less than instead of greater than, causing the while loop to end. So those should be all the components that we need to um, calculate the um, powers of the robot. We have our X component, our Y component, and our pivot correction, uh, just so we can maintain that orientation. Since we're also ca since this is the robot's relative position. Uh, to that point that we want to go to. Um, so you guys should be able to use these X, Y components in this pivot correction in order to set the powers to those mechanum wheels on your robot. I'm not going to go through this in this video as it's um, outside the scope of the video, but you guys, um, I'm going to leave that up to you guys to figure out on your own. So once you are able to figure that out, um, we can go ahead and apply that method over here. So you can see this is after the wait for start. So if I want to go to, let's say I want to go to, uh, I want to go 24 inches forward. So that would be a position of 0, 24. Let's say I go 0.5 power. I want to keep my original orientation, which is 0. And let's say I want to be accurate to within 1 inch. Now, there is something wrong in here in the way I typed in the parameters. So you can see over here, all of our 
all of our um, calculations are done using encoder counts, not inches. So over here, when I pass in my arguments, I always have to multiply the parameters times counts per inch. In the case of the zero, it doesn't matter, but it's good practice. So you always want to multiply these variables by counts per inch, the x, y, and the allowable distance error. So that's how you should be able to pass in arguments into your go to position method. If you want to go to 24, comma 24, you would just have to change that in here. So let's say we want to go to 0, 24. Then uh, we can go to 24, comma 24. And then we can go back to where we started, which is 0, 0. So that's how you should be able to create your method pass in the parameters, and have your robot go into, uh, go to those specific coordinate positions. Everything we did in here is just some basic trigonometry and, and used to calculate what angle do we have to move the robot at, and um, getting the x, the y, and the pivot correction components of the motion that we have to make. All of that's done just using some simple trigonometry. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys in order to figure out how to use these three variables in order to um, set the powers to your motors on your Mechanum robot. But this should give you a basic overview of how to go to specific coordinate positions on the field and how to use your odometry to get really accurate motions during autonomous. Well, that wraps up this video in our odometry spellbook series. If you guys have any questions about the video or any questions in general, um, just uh, email us at wizards.exe at gmail.com or let us know in the comments below. Um, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you would like us to put out any more videos, uh, just let us know in the comments or send us an email. Um, once again, thank you guys for watching.